got home and I wondered why did I buy some of these things which you know I figured that the budget would be a fix for that cut but what do you know you're not going to fix everything wrong with your consumption in a month and I'm very disappointed in that hi friends hi my name is Mia and this is my virtual vanity a place where we both love makeup and we're quite critical of it and today I present you my very first official update for my vanity budget of 2020 if you are new my vanity budget of 2020 aims to rein in my consumption a bit make me fall back in love with using stuff I already have and it's basically a form of rehab for my crackhead magpie brain who would just love nothing more but to chase after everything shiny and new instead of playing with the toys that she has. A month has passed. I actually wanted to upload this earlier but work has been kicking me in the ass. Hopefully in a month or so I'm actually going to move into a new position. Um, so that will probably give me more time. It's got better shifts and everything like that. So you guys keep your fingers crossed for me. But you guys, you, you didn't come here to hear about my job woes. You came here to hear about my thoughts and it's been a roller coaster. Before getting to my roller coaster of feelings, which I had to confront, which I didn't like because I'm an Aquarius and we are allergic to feelings, let's talk about the things that I actually got with my budget. The rules are here. Basically, I have a total of $100 for both clothing and makeup. However, the makeup part can't be more than 50, 60 dollars ish. Why I'm putting in the ish is because if you can tell by my accent, I do not live in the US nor in any other part of the world that uses the main currency of the dollar. So I get to play fast and loose with currency rates. I'm allowed maximum two items of makeup, two items of clothing. I am allowed one online order every two months and that is because shipping here takes time. I am allowed one palette every three months. Alas, I still have two months to go before new eyeshadow touches my hand and blesses me with its sparkly shiny presence. Let's start with the less interesting part of the video, that is the clothing. I bought two t-shirts from a Polish brand called Reserved and why I like buying from Reserved is because their price point is quite nice but most of their items are made in European factories like in Poland uh, stuff, some stuff is made in Turkey very rarely do I see things made in third world countries which to me gives me maybe a fake it might be a fake sense of security into the fact that they are probably producing their clothing in more ethical means it might be an illusion I bought these two t-shirts the very first one is this white number with this very cute embroidery and like the pearls in the front and why I bought this was because it's so fucking hard to find white t-shirts that aren't as thick as a tissue paper and that would not get me arrested for in this in this in this uh, this word exposure most of the time it's like I'm trying to wrestle buying a white t-shirt that fits well that has a cute fabric and then i have to think do i need like a t-shirt bra with it will even the t-shirt bra show will it get janky in the wash is the quality okay is the price okay it's like fucking maddening trying to find a white t-shirt that has this kind of thick fabric is like trying to find a goddamn unicorn and i've tried menswear as well but it seems like even the men's wear white t-shirts have given up on life and just letting men's nipples roam around freely like ponies in a park. God fucking knows what's going on with clo the clothing industry these days. I bought its counterpart in beige which has a different embroidery and I'm really into these types of designs lately. I've really enjoyed drawing them. I have enjoyed using them as inspiration. I'm just hoping that these little pearlies don't get sucked up in the wash because then I will have to DIY a solution so I can continue wearing the t-shirt. Again, very thick material and actually have no t-shirt in such a neutral color. If you recall my intro, I said that at a certain point I was thinking, why did I buy more of these? 
which was a problem that I thought uh, artificially minimizing the amount of things that I bring into my home and giving me these rules would make me avoid. But alas, it seems you cannot change your consumption in one month and fixing the amount of things that you bring in in one month will not fix the amount of things that you already brought in and impulsively bought all over the years. I came home very happy with my purchases, feeling like such a conscious consumer and as I started folding my shit to put it in the drawers, I took a look at my t-shirt drawer and I was like, but I literally have tens of t-shirts. Why did I buy these? Granted, they are cute and I can say I have no other t-shirt like this because I had no other cream t-shirt, I had no other white t-shirt of good quality. But still, I have so many t-shirts and now I feel the need to declutter and curate but I'm wary of decluttering and curating because I'm wondering if I'm doing it just to scratch an itch and that is to use objects to self-actualize and when I mean self-actualize is to use objects to reach an unattainable arbitrary standard of how I or my exterior place stuff things how I want that to be because okay I declutter now but there is no point in end up buying more things to fill in to declutter next year so I really have to give myself some time maybe do the declutter because I'm out of space but also start considering if the decluttering both of makeup and of clothing isn't just another side of the same coin as buying too much because in the end it's just scratching an itch Buying too much is just scratching that itch of I want something new and then decluttering is just scratching that itch of just thinning down the herd until I could maybe possibly get to the arbitrary ideal of how I want my things to be but is it even possible to reach that ideal for someone like me? I'm thinking that maybe now that I limit myself a declutter would do good because then I don't have the means to fill it with much more shit but still, I'm, I'm, I'm wary of how my mind is wrapping around this and this needs further consideration and introspection that I honestly did not have the mental energy to do because of work. Let's talk makeup. And I'm actually incredibly happy with both of my purchases. I bought a mini of the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder and this is in dim light. Honestly, for something so expensive, the packaging feels cheap as shit, but the product inside is really beautiful. Hourglass was one of the brands that I wanted to try in 2020, and my logic was, okay, let's start the budget with a bag, and the peas, the magpie brain goblin, and buy something that I wanted for a while, and that I wouldn't let myself to buy because it was expensive. But if you think about it, okay, I didn't buy that because it was expensive, but I was buying shit that added up to the same amount, so really, who the fuck was I kidding? I really enjoyed this powder. For me, it's everything that is, it is cracked up to be. It lives up to the hype. I'm hoping that I will maybe one day hit pan on this, and then I will buy the full size. How I apply it is I take a very fluffy powder brush and just dust it all over my face. I don't do like buffing motions, and I don't try to push the product into my, my skin, I just apply it like a veil of thin product all over my face. The second item is like a YouTube made me buy it type of thing. This is the Becca Under Eye Cor Corrector and I use the shade um, light to medium. There are only two shades, I feel they could maybe add a third one that is darker. And this, this had a bit of a uh, love curve to it because the first time I applied it, it made me look so well rested that it made me look that it shocked me and my under eyes looked so dewy and fresh and not like I'm battling my demons every night at a certain point I was like okay do I not like this or am I just shocked because it's some look that I am not used to seeing on myself and eventually I have loved loved using this I am actually neglecting some of my actual concealers for day-to-day -day wear it is so easy to just dab this a bit with my finger on my under eyes before I leave for work it makes me look like a regular person that is not chronically tired. 
it's really an amazing product I also like that I don't need to set this it's, it's really a very pleasant product to use and I love the result and to me it was worth every penny these two almost took me past the edge of my makeup budget for the month these 55 something dollars it depends on the daily currency rate but in that ballpark the t-shirts uh, threw me back I think these were like $10 or so each so 20 something with 55 ish feel that in February it will be much better because these are big ticket items and I'll probably not buy anything expensive in February just to compensate for this month a thing that make make this month much easier and it feels like I like inputted a cheat code or something was that my yes style order that I placed in December arrived at the end of the month and kind of scratched that itch of new makeup so I'm not sure if I should count this month as a successful one because okay true I stayed true to my numbers I stayed in the budget but I got some new stuff so mm, I'm not sure yet what was so interesting this month is how my moods changed and in denying myself so many things that I wanted with those changing moods I realized actually how many of my purchases were impulsive pur purchases purchases done at the end of a long work week just because I wanted something shiny and pretty to fill the void inside moreover it made me realize that for so many things until now I could have just shopped my stash but I didn't because pretty shiny new there was this roller coaster of simply wanting things and ignoring that itch to get a new thing and then deciding the days past that I don't want that thing actually and that I want another thing. I've got like a running tally, a wish list that I keep on my phone. I joke you not, that wish list has morphed like a chimera multiple times through the months, which really shows me that my desires are transitory come and go with my moods with my current aesthetics and that if I wait long enough let's say that a wish list 10 items long only two or three items maybe survive a uh, culling at the end of the month or a weekly culling of do I still want this am I still thinking about this finally saw the advantage of just waiting a bit because most of the stuff that uh, I initially was like oh my god I want this I'll get so much use out of this this is so amazing in two weeks I was, in two weeks, I was like eh, I can use this instead I also noticed that the more times passed the more I developed a sort of grapes are sour mentality and I was a bit of a Debbie Downer even shopping makeup with friends like we would be at the mall and they would look at stuff and I was like okay but are you gonna use this but don't you have anything that would work with it I was like I was such a Debbie Downer and not letting them impulsive shop and it's it truly was a case of the grapes are sour because I couldn't let myself have anything new past these two items it was as if a switch was turned on in my head where i knew that i had to be in critical thinking mode to avoid temptation and so i was just flexing that muscle more and more trying a new exercise you're doing a push-up one day you're doing a second push-up the second day and then by the end of the month you're able to do i don't know 15 push-ups in a row or something and that muscle just builds itself, builds itself, builds itself. Sure, you're going to have moments where you're like this close to just wanting to buy the fucking sparkle dust. But I found myself in like this, like riding the wave of being more and more critical as time passed. Now, this has been only a month. I am starting to wonder if this is just temporary because right now I'm on the high of being on a budget. I'm sure that February, March is going to be a much harder time for me as I start to truly push myself to not listen to the magpie brain. I am sure that said magpie brain 
is soon going to start trying to riot and mutiny against me. Listen to how I talk about it. The makeup goblin, the magpie brain, the magpie crackhead, whatever. I am externalizing my desire for makeup, which, you know, if I would play a bit armchair psychologist, I would say that maybe it's got two purposes. One, it tries to detach my guilt from actually me being the one that does these things or it's actually trying to externalize it to fight it better. We will see during this year which one it actually is. Overall, I feel that this month opened the many possibilities that my collection already offered because wanting so many new things, I was like, okay, I gotta shop my fucking stash or I'm gonna go insane. So I did a lot of shopping my stash this month and I do feel that it just like broadened my horizons into what, what I already have can do for me. I'm really curious to see what will happen as the month of February progresses and as we go through the year. Let me know what you think, uh, if you have any advice, whatever, if you went through a budget, if you have any opinions regarding what I said over here. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I hope you'll have a wonderful evening, a morning, second breakfast, third lunch, whatever it is where you're from. Bye!